When the Apollo program started, an internal committee at NASA assessed the risk of the mission and said that they expected to lose 30 astronauts before three would return safely from the moon. Everything was so new and a little bit sketchy at the time. The Atlas rocket that launched John Glenn had something like a 49% success rate when he got on top of it to go into orbit. But the astronauts understood and accepted the risk. Mike Collins said that any given mission was basically a fragile daisy chain of events. The Apollo 1 fire made safety a core value for NASA, with open communication and a free discussion about anything anyone thought might be a safety concern. The space shuttle developed in a very different era and for a different purpose. And I've talked about it elsewhere, but in short, it basically over-promised and under-delivered. And weirdly, risk was kind of neglected in planning. Safety was kind of assumed and people let their guard down. And then as the program racked up successful launch after successful launch, engineers started ignoring things that were a little bit problematic. It was like the program lured everyone into a false sense of safety that made spaceflight feel as inherently safe as commercial aviation. There was no provision for the crew to escape if the booster failed during launch. Also, with the shuttle, they were right up against that booster, not on top of it like Apollo. A different arrangement and a launch escape system would have saved the Challenger crew. Something different might have helped the Columbia crew. So why am I talking about this? Because NASA's acting administrator just came out saying that it's probably time to take bigger risks with crews for the sake of beating China to the moon. That just seems strange to me when we have 60 years of spaceflight history, a lot of which discusses risk to learn from right now. I'm an historian. I'm never going to stop pushing people to please study history across all topics.